Welcome to the Completely Unnecessary Podcast for Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. That's Ian Ferguson. It's me. In a sick state. Mm -hmm. I'm Pat Contry, mentally sick. On the show today, we'll be talking about Smash Brothers, direct DLC news, Cooley Skunk discovered and dumped, an N64 prototype screen for controller resurfaces, a couple other topics. Our pal Ninja in the news, maybe, uh, and a Patreon poll topic. We've got some announcements to do first. Uh, bef- uh, up top, we got enamel pins for sale at ultimatenintendo.com. They're nice. Me and Ian are cute as cartoons, right? Our faces on your bag or clothing. Or or lapel. Lapel. <laughs> it's a big lapel pin. It's a big la- it's those, a, it's, are, those are big pins. It's a sturdy pin. It's like an inch three quarters to two inches big. Uh more importantly, for the first time publicly, we're going to have for sale, not at an event, the limited uh, CU podcast shirt. Go to ultimatenintendo.com there, available in your in your, your uh, standard sizes, uh, small up to double XL there. Ian, you're excited about the shirt, right? I'm very excited. This is a nice, it's a nice clean shirt. I'm very excited that this limited shirt is not so limited anymore. Yeah, before we just sold out a couple events, but it's like, you know what? We should start making our money back by actually selling online as well. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea for Pat to get off his butt and put it on the website. What's not on the website yet, Ian, but will be soon, is the Not For Resale Video Game Store documentary. uh, Whoa, hey. Blu-ray. Huh? Whoa, hey. Ian's got his uh, Blu-ray. He's embargoed right now, though. I am embargoed. Uh, Because we have to get it on the Amazon listing up, and then it'll also be... Locked in by ships. It'll also be... (laughs) It's a surrounding surrounding your apartment, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then it'll be up on Amazon, hopefully soon. We're also trying to get it on Vimeo as well, and maybe Good Old Games since they have a curated little uh, movie section, all video game related. So that'd be cute too. And the bigger announcement right now, besides that, besides I could, you know, maybe start making uh, some my investment back <laughs> this at some point, will be that it will be screening at PAX East. That's good news. And PAX East this year is February 27th to March 1st. So it, it will be screening um, Friday night at 8 p.m., I believe. It's like prime time. And I don't know exactly where it's screening. But it's screening at PAX East. That's exciting, right? Mm, it is. I have, I'll have a lot of Dayquil in me. <laughs> oh, okay, let me show you. <laughs> You're like how I was at, at Portland, except you can speak and I couldn't speak at Portland. Mm, yes. I should have been hospitalized at PRG. <laughs> I, was, I was barely hanging on for... Dear life, there. I had a I, weird, real quick. I had a weird dream. I've been having lots of weird dreams the past. I want to say like two months. Very vivid, weird pat dreams. That there's usually arcs to my dreams. That when they're weird, they're like uh, there's like beginning, middle, ends. Before I wake up, obviously, or if I know I'm dreaming and feel weirded out by it, then I wake myself up. You ever wake yourself up from a dream? It's a skill. Yeah, you I can do it. I have. I I've been having a lot of weird dreams because of Nyquil. Lately, okay. uh, Nyquil. Should I put a barrier right here, like just like a plexiglass? Nyquil glass? gives me oh, very, very, very specifically weird dreams. Um, and I had one. They're drugged. And I had one the other day. I had a very weird dream the other day that uh, I watched a hotel materialize in front of me. Uh, I was in New York uh, with someone. I don't know who the person is. Okay. And then when I went to go into the hotel, the hotel looked sort of like the interior of Kowloon Walled City. Okay. Uh, nice Bloodsport throwback reference. However, all of the like rooms were normal hotel rooms once you got inside of them. And in the dream, the person who I don't know, I don't know who it was, got me to do a lot of drugs that I haven't done in a long time, uh, including ecstasy. And I remember waking up from the dream very very shook because for a second in the dream it actually felt like i was on ecstasy again it was very weird you came out of the dream with that feeling like oh my god yeah and i was like whoa and it obviously it faded extraordinarily fast because i wasn't on anything other than you know the very very potent iquil but yeah you have that, that nice cold sweat from dreams i used to get those a lot yeah yeah it was bizarre um real quick my my dream then oh uh, speak speaking of hotel i might as well bring this up I've been, you know, I, I'm all about the Netflix document, like docu series, like mm. all about them. That's what I've been watching. They're fascinating. <laughs> Humans are weird and screwed up, and uh, you know, truth is stranger than fiction. 
So I watched the. Uh, it was a, actually it was a movie. It was like a ninety minute movie. It was called Voyeur. It was about a guy that opened up a Colorado hotel in the seventies and specifically built a catwalk hidden with vents above the beds in each room so he can spy on people. Mm, that's neat. And um, he did it for like decades, like twenty years, and he kept was creepier about it. Uh, that he kept like written notes like he thought he was like a researcher keeping notes about who was who was in what room um you know who was having sex what they were doing things like that and um the guy's still alive they tore down the hotel and then it, a book was written about it by a famous author i forget his name um and then it fa found out he might have been twisting some of the truth and the dates so Really? A creepy guy who's spying yeah, on people well, might not be completely well, honest the, about what he saw? Well, the author... But, no, the author went there, though. He saw it. Like, he saw the, the, the cat... Like, it was there. Oh, I so believe it. Was doing it. I'm just but saying. the guy twisted it. So, like, before the book came out, he got so pissed because he found that it was sold, the hotel. So then he said he disavowed his own book right when it was coming out. But he shouldn't have because the, the guy said, yeah, I did sell it, but I still used it. I had a key to it to still use it. So it was one of those weird situations where really creepy and weird fascinating story uh sort of a human tale too because the guy's guy is like not overtly like this big creep when you look at him he seems, he seems like a normal guy but deep down he's still like a sociopath uh kind of but he has a loving wife and um yeah check it out it's voyeur on, on netflix very fascinating it's like 85 minutes it's it's uh it's a it's a quick little romp just like not for resale not for resale is under 90 minutes as well we try to keep that buddy short there uh oh real, real quick my dream um, no, no, uh, no, uh, illicit drugs involved, uh, but, uh, illicit gun running involved in my dream. So my dream started, there was like three waves to the dream. The first wave was playing poker with like seven, eight people and I was doing okay. And I've been playing poker once a month at a local place and I finally won the last time. I was like, I broke even the first three times, which is like impossible. And then the fourth time I finally won, I, I doubled my money basically, which is a good day for poker. Um, and then, so my dream, I'm playing poker. And then it didn't go my way. And then something happens with the cards. Someone had to run and get the cards. Then someone uh, across the room, a couple of women and a guy put on a porno on a TV. But it was like a porno from the 70s. So it was like it was like a weird VHS tape. Flash forward to the third part of my dream where I'm like in this weird seedy like motel apartment sort of place where people live. And I find an Uzi on the ground. Mm -hmm. Old school 80s Uzi. Full Uzi, right? And I like this. This is cool. I should pick this up and walk with this through the neighborhood. What could be bad about that? I pick up the Uzi, and then I think someone that's looking for it, hey, what happened to my Uzi? But I was like, I just walked away. So I'm walking down the street, and then I realize, what if I see a cop? And I got this big Uzi, and it has like the stock on the back too. So it's like a, you know, it's not just a, how am I going to like fit this down my pants? So I try to like stuff it in and, like sweat my sweatpants I think I had on. Didn't work. It's gigantic. Did you blow your balls off? No, I didn't. I should at least, you know, a, a, a responsible gun-owning Pat would have, like, at least taken the clip out of the Uzi. Would have checked responsibly uh, there. But I didn't. So um, so then I, I'm like, then... You were high on 70s porno. I don't know what was going on in this stream. This is, this is like, my weird... Uh, I, I only took, like, a little, like, not even a nibble of a CBD gummy, too. So I don't, that's not even an excuse before I went to bed. I, I was just out of it from yoga, I think. Oh, I, I instructed my first yoga class last night, by the way. It was impromptu. It was cool. Anyway, so flash forward to um, a grandma, her like younger sister or daughter and the granddaughters picking me up in a car. Think like an old like Lincoln Continental type of car. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in the back seat. I don't know how I ended up in the car, but I'm in the back seat with the granddaughters on both sides of me. And then grandma driving and I guess the, the mom on the right side. There's like five of us. We're driving along, and then all of a sudden it turns into like a fucking Sopranos episode. All of a sudden, I'm like, we're driving along. I'm like, why are we driving into the woods? Like, why are we not? Oh, we're like going off the beaten path. I'm like, what's going on? Then I think I realized they were after me for stealing the Uzi. I think. I think in my dream. I think that's what they were after me. They wanted to kill me in this dream. So then I can't get the Uzi out, but I somehow then all of a sudden have a revolver on me, like a small, like, snub nose revolver. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, I'll play this game. So I just put it up to the back of grandma's head and say, you're going to let me off right now. Right now, you're going to let me, you're going to let me out of the car. I think they knew I had another gun on me. I don't know. It was weird. And then, the, so then the two granddaughters start just going nuts. Like, oh no. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to shoot you unless you let me, you got to let me out. Then, you know, and then they let me out at like a convenience store. And that was like where I kind of woke up. 
So that was my weird dream. Whoa, whoa, hey! Smash Brothers announced uh, just a couple days ago. Was that ago. not an interesting story? It was <laughs> something. <laughs> Please don't get germs on my Aero Blasters. I mean, it's going to happen. Uh, there was a Smash Direct. Uh, we'll just touch on it quickly. Uh, a few days ago. I'm not going to touch you. You're sick. And uh, uh, they announced the fifth DLC character. Uh, a lot of people thought that it was going to be uh, Dante from Devil May Cry because there was they were teasing a Capcom some sort of announcement of something. There were there were there were enough clues to make people think that that maybe might be one. <clears throat> but then again, people are really good at finding clues that aren't that, there that, that yeah. fit their theories. However, I was relatively convinced that it was going to be Dante from Devil May Cry. So uh, they did the direct, and lots of people, depending on where you you live, woke up early to watch it. And they it announced was a long, it was a long direct too, right? Thirty eight minutes, I believe. Okay. And uh, the big reveal, big 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 reveal was Byleth from who was that? Fire Emblem. It's the main player character, I believe, from the most recent Fire Emblem. I don't know. Three Houses. Fire Emblem. Uh, look, here's here's the deal. I don't play a lot of Fire Emblem. Here's I the like thing. I like Fire Emblem. I think it's a fun game. It's it's a, it's a fun game. Uh, this is the eighth Fire Emblem character. I was gonna say sixth. Eighth. I know there's a lot. Eighth. Eighth. This is the eighth Fire Emblem character in the game. All I know is they all have fucking swords, usually, right? They all have swords. <laughs> <laughs> they all look similar. Look, now, I realize as a person who's not huge into Fire Emblem as much as other people are, that it's easy to go, all these characters are the same. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure they all have interesting <laughs> stories and backgrounds and personalities. They're all fighting demons and uh, wizards? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some dragons. Maybe, maybe, so, yeah, emblems, dragons. maybe emblems of fire. Uh, <laughs> but... And, and, and honestly, in a roster that is, what, 70-something strong now? 80-something it's, it's strong? It's ridiculous. It's not that huge of a deal. But with... I, I, I do feel like... It, I, I can't get that upset about it. There's so many characters in it that I like. But I do feel like it's kind of it was kind of a blown opportunity for the, the, the last slot in the first um, pass. And it kind of goes against what the other expanded characters have been. They've all been from... Um, they've all been from... Outside of Nintendo, yeah, Persona, Joker, right? yeah, right. You had Persona, uh, you had uh, Dragon Quest, uh, Banjo Kazooie, King of Fighters, and then back to fucking Fire Emblem. Well, what's interesting is that when you said there was eight, I'm like, okay, that's ten percent of the roster. If there's about eighty, that's a lot for one game. For a, it is, and, and, for, no. and for a game title that isn't as ubiquitous here as like a lot of the other titles. And that's the other thing, you like know. I. I can't, like I said, I can't be that upset because it's very popular. Sure. Just because it's not popular with me doesn't mean it's not popular with everyone else or other people or in other parts of the world. Um, Mario is heavily represented. Zelda is heavily represented. Mario. Nintendo wants Fire Emblem to be one of their big franchises. So I get it. They want it to be like their like Final Fantasy-esque sort of thing. Unfortunately, because of the nature of the game, it makes the characters, at least from an aesthetic viewpoint look very samey and they all have like right swords but, and stuff like that this character especially was kind of a little bit of a bummer to me because the way this character looks like it's going to play with its ability to change weapons and stuff it would have been a perfect fit for another character people had uh speculated could be coming and that's um a monster hunter Okay. Uh, from Capcom, because in the Monster Hunter games, there's I don't even know the, more than tw I think at least twelve weapons, and I like Monster Hunter. I only use one weapon set though. Um, there's like it, m there's tons of different weapons, so they could have easily adapted this move set to something like a Monster Hunter character, giving it a couple of different costumes so that it looked like different armor sets sure. for Monster Hunter. Uh it, 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 I think that would have been more exciting to people, um, especially with another fighter pass coming out six more you know characters uh it's not that big of a deal although i think for the you know just uh, you know with it being the last entry in this fighter pass i feel like if you really wanted to do another fire emblem character you could have shoved it in the middle of the second fighter pass somewhere i think i think the the strange thing about fire emblem as little as i know is that there's different like chronologies and like there's different each game is not just a sequel to the next so you have different guys that show up there's different stories told but there's also so, yeah but there's things that link between them too sure but it's still not like you're not gonna have the same character appear in like 10 games in a row sure. there's gonna be different characters that show up and disappear 
So Nintendo, I don't think has done well ever to like market series like that because that's not their bread and butter. Their, their bread and butter is let's have the same guys appear over and over again. So for something like me, that's how I, I can't get into it because I wouldn't know where to start. I just wouldn't know since there's been like, according to this, there's been like, thir- like 13 17, games. I think, Seven, I think there's 17 entries. There's a lot of games. It was interesting to f- learn about them during the, the, the guidebook just because it's like, oh, like on the Super Famicom, there was like five games. It's like, oh, holy shit. You know, like, so they, they, they obviously in Japan, it was huge, but they didn't come out here right. on the Super Nintendo. So you didn't have a chance to learn. So I understand that some people were confused. The funniest thing was the compilation video that someone uh, had where they, it was all the videos of people. I guess they get up early in the morning. I'm not trying to judge you. And they go to the Nintendo store in, in New York to watch it on the big screen. Sure. And they had the reactions to all these new DLC characters one in a row. And people were going nuts until this character was like, all right, let's pack it up and go home. Like they, it was really yeah. like, really didn't really well, hit the same sort of marks as the other characters, at least to the people there. There's two other things I would say about it. Um, one, um, Nintendo has to market their stuff and, uh, putting the this character in as DLC now kind of makes sense. Uh, there's going to be DLC for Fire Emblem. They want this game to become big. They want it to be as big as it is elsewhere, everywhere. I don't know that it's going to be as big, ever as big here as it, as it is in Japan. Um, two, uh, Sakurai loves the Fire Emblem games. You think? Yes, he does. Well, he puts he puts eight characters. And in. F- from what I understand, you know, Nintendo. From, from this, my understanding is <laughs> Nintendo basically okayed a list of potential DLC characters, and he's been picking from them. Gotcha. And he gets kind of like the final say on it. And uh, that guy's been working his ass off. So if uh, he okay. wa- if he wants to add another Fire Emblem character in a roster of something like fucking eighty five characters or whatever it is, and we've got six more coming out, more power to There's him. Six more coming out. There's six more characters coming out. Yeah, that's what I just said. Um, there's six more. Yeah. The, the, How tiny is that? Is the roster screen going to be when you just going to pick your character? Yeah, uh, from from now until <laughs> December 2020, they're doing six more characters. And initially, it was supposed to be five. I think maybe the six was kind of like, okay, okay, we're going to give you that other Fire Emblem well, character, but at least you get six. And was like, oh, we can just keep making sure. money here. We can <laughs> we can just add a thousand characters to this game. So, um, you know what? Fine. I mean, if, if if the guy who's making the game that everyone loves is happy, then then I'm I'm happy too. Like I said, I've got tons of cool characters I can pick okay. from. So yeah, I mean, uh, Marth, Ike, Lucina, Byleth, Crom, Palatina. That's not that's, that's not Fire not Emblem. Fire Emblem. Uh, that's kidding. Ellie Wood, Shulk. Is that Fire Emblem? No. I'm just looking at this list on. It's, it's wrong. Then Roy, Lindis. Are these are these even characters? I don't know. I'm just, I just did a... Stop reading. I did a, I did Fire Emblem Smash characters. That's the first thing that came up. I guess it's wrong, the images. I got some of them right. Okay. More importantly, though, or not more importantly, the little Cuphead skin. Was it that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be cool. Not its own character, right? It's just a skin for the... It's just the... It's for the, the, me, one of the, the me, me shooter? Yeah, me uh, shooter. That, that's cute, it right? Is. I guess it's just an alternate thing. Do you have to buy that, too, then, or buy the DLC? Yeah, that, I, I believe you have to buy the costumes, yes. That was kind of surprising to see, right? Yeah, it was nice. So... Yeah, it's nice not to a good game. So don't be, you know, I, I think if you want to get up five in the morning and go to a Nintendo store and watch, that's, that's well. Fair the interesting enough. thing is, uh, I I don't actually see people being too salty about this. I haven't seen that many people like very very upset. Like, like, like how some people were upset with Terry being announced, which was insane. People not knowing. Come who on, Terry. Ter- is. Come on, Terry's. Come on, people. Um, Terry's Terry. I mean, I'm an SNK fanboy, but. Um, no, the, the the response to this one hasn't. I haven't even seen like a lot of anger. I've just seen a lot of deflation, just a lot of. They're just like, okay. all right, okay. Well, we'll be back but, in two months. But if they do another Fire Emblem character, people will flip their shit. I, think, at this I point. don't think they will. I think they'll be like, you know, well, well wait, because it's first party, they kind of give it. Okay, it's like, uh, okay. I, it, I still, I still think Dante is is is, is a is a potential choice, but at this point, I think Dante is another sword boy. Sword boy, I like that sword boy with spiky hair. Uh, another spiky sword hair. boy. I, I, I we, spiky we, hair. What I want to see for what I want to see at least a couple of in this fighter pass is interesting characters that don't use normal fighting 
conventions. Get, like, I'll never use them, but, like, give me another Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, Some, Banjo someone Kazooie. weird. Another Piranha Plant. Like, do something duck, like that. Duck Hunt Dog. Right. Something weird. Um, all of the characters... Danny Sullivan. All of the characters that they've released for this fighter pass, with the exception of um, Banjo-Kazooie, have been characters that I, I think it's, it's easy to see them work as... Um, fighting er, as, as characters in a fighting game you have terry who's from a fucking fighting game you have uh sword friend uh sword, you have sword, uh, like sword boy. you have akira toriyama's sword friend um and then you have a uh, friend with uh what is what is what the fuck does joker use i don't know Does he have a gun joker uh no gu gun would have been gun would have been persona 3 i don't fucking know maybe whatever he's got a nice suit though give me a uh, Give me Big the Cat from Sonic the Hedgehog. No, we've already got someone who attacks the fishing pole. I would oh, love, yeah. I would love Big the Cat, though. I don't know who Big the Cat is. You know who fucking Big the Cat is? No. What, oh, what, what, Big the Cat is the best. What Sonic game is that? Uh, Sonic Adventure? Oh, Big the Cat. Oh, Big the I cat. love Big the Cat. Is it, is it a boss? No, Big the Cat's your friend. He's got a frog friend. You have to you have to fish the frog out of the pool. He's purple and scary. He's great. I love Big. It looks like it looks like Eggman. He's shaped like Eggman. Oh, Big the Cat! It's kind of scary looking. I love him. It's got a it's got a large, cho large torso. Froggy? Does not look like a cat? It looks he's, like a, it's like a, he's, he's, he looks like Big the Cat. He looks like a jackrabbit. He's <laughs> so good. It doesn't look like a cat at all. Big is so good. Okay, he's a cute, he's and a cuddly. good boy. Maybe he's gonna be in the movie for a second. Would you be Ew, excited? I would be really that's excited. Sonic, that Sonic movie comes out in a couple months, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna go see. It comes out on Valentine's Day. What do you think, Vani and I are doing? I haven't seen any marketing for it yet. Is it really on Valentine's Day? Yeah. <laughs> that's also Spike's birthday. It really is it. A Valentine. That's the day that February. Vani found him, and he was like a tiny little bean. Aww. So he we just February fourteenth. Yeah. Aw. Oh, so okay, we'll, we'll, we'll probably go. Uh, we'll probably if, if if there's a midnight showing, we'll go on the thirteenth, and then uh, I'll probably order a Bocce's pizza from Buffalo, New York, and we'll celebrate Spike's birthday on Valentine's Day. How much is a pizza from Buffalo? Uh, I think it's like seventy bucks. Seventy bucks shipped? Yeah. What if you order two? Like twenty bucks? Actually, uh, like, that's what I've started doing now. You start ordering the party size because you get it. You get like. The pizza comes cut in half, stacked. If you order the so it, it's too high. If you order. Uh, I've been too high before. If you order the party size, it's three high. You get an extra third, and oh. uh, it only adds like. Well, why don't you talk to Pat next time? We can go. We can like go. I don't and... share this pizza with anyone but who I'm married to. Wow. Yeah. After I bought you Long Island pizza for your birthday, Ian. Okay. I see how it is. That pizza was excellent, by the way. It was a good pizza. I have. I, that's. I can't. I, it spoils me. East Coast pizza. I'm sorry. But even that was better. When I went to Pennsylvania, I had an Italian pizzeria. It was not as good as that Long Island pizza. It just wasn't. Mm. The further west you go, the shittier the pizza gets. I mean, it's, it's just a gradient. That's how it works. All right, real quick as well. GameStop did not do well in the fourth quarter. No, they did not. No, they did not. We will probably meet, meet and talk. To, we talk offline. Mm. And we discussed how it'd be bigger news when the fiscal year report comes up, probably in the March, early April, you know, about how bad it was. Uh, they're 2019 because the 18 was bad. The 18 they lost <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars. We mentioned it in a certain documentary, not for resale, but um, they dropped revenue dropped 27.5 percent in the fourth quarter of 2019 compared to the fourth quarter 2018. 25 percent. You may think that's oh that's not horrible. But you do the most business in the fourth quarter in the year. So that's 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 monumentally bad, and if they took a big loss in 2018, and then 25 percent less for one of their most important quarters, it's going to be another loss. It's just how bad is it going to be? I know they sold off parts of their businesses, like their mobile phone stuff. I think that they sold off or got out of, I, I believe, but um, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Um, yeah. So the, the the actual revenue for the nine week season was. Uh, 1.38 billion of revenue. So that means 20. Wow. So that means Pat Math Ian. That means they did about well, what was that? Uh, 2.4, 2.5 billion in 2018. So they dropped 700 million dollars uh, in one quarter from your next. That's insane. Oh Boise, Boise. They probably have a couple. Remember of Boise. Oh Boise's? No. 
You don't remember the Keebler potato chips? Oh, yes! Keebler had two brands of potato chips in the 90s, Oboises and Pizzerias. I do. Now, I do remember the Oboises. I don't remember them being good at all. They tasted like cardboard. I I, yeah, I did not like them. They the pizza, taste, it was different. It, they were like potato skins almost, right? Well, they wanted them to be like, hey, these taste like the real potato, but it didn't. And they tasted kind of like shit. <clears throat> okay, so speaking of uh, shit, uh, the GameStop C... No, George is a nice guy from AutoZone. George Sherman uh, said the company had expected a challenging sales environment over the holidays thanks to the end of the current generation of consoles. He said our customers continue to delay purchases ahead of anticipated console launches in late 2020. You think they're delaying purchases of games? There's still games to buy. It's just, you know, obviously your console sales will be down. You can't sell a lot more PlayStation. He's than... talking out of his asshole. You think so? Mm-hmm. He's trying to ease people, ease their minds. So I, I think you're looking at a situation here where obviously if, if GameStop stores are still all there'll be GameStop around in a year it's just how many will be around next next Christmas because we know they're going to be closing a lot this spring they already pre-announced that it's just how many are they going to close um, they're going to bounce back maybe somewhat but they're still not going to hit the point even probably where they were at two years ago even with two new consoles I don't see that happening I just don't I think people just pre-order from Amazon um, even Target go to Walmart and get the consoles. I just see it. Well, I don't think there's a huge profit margin for them on consoles either. That that too, right? <clears throat> I mean, there's not a huge one on new games. I mean, that that's uh, why they rely so heavily on used games. That's why all game shops rely heavily on used games. There's like no good profit margin on that stuff. So, uh, you know, I mean, if the launch lineup for say the, well, I mean, with the Xbox, there's no real launch lineup because you can just get that shit on your fucking <laughs> Xbox really, One. I don't remember that conversation. I don't that either. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't... Even if they move a bunch of systems, I don't see them making a lot of money from games because these launch lineups have been smaller and smaller. I, 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 I don't see them having a good year, even with the systems. Um, he, Nintendo did well for them. Uh, he said... Or management said via GameSpot, we continue to see growth in the Nintendo Switch platform. Yeah, it's almost three years, uh, which supports our view that our sales will strengthen as new consoles and innovative technology are introduced. Well, that doesn't make any sense because it's been out for almost three years. It's not a new console. You can say, yeah, the Switch Lite probably got them some new sales, but you know, come on, it's it's just that you had something fresh and new and it's kiddie-ish and people wanted to get the Switch. Well, honestly, you know. I'd see them making more money off of something like a Switch Lite because by that point, there's already a large um, library of used games for them to sell, which is where they make more of their money. There you go. So I think that they would actually probably see a, a bigger bump in profit from something like a, a an incremental upgrade like the Switch Lite than they probably will from something like a, a PlayStation 5. They can sell some used Mario know. Odysseys laying around. Right. Who would resell Odyssey? I still have to finish that game. I'm like, it's a great game. Like two There's this through. weird fucking, like, I, I don't know. There's this like weird trend now of people saying that Mario Odyssey wasn't a good game. And Mario, what? Mario Odyssey is fucking fantastic. Uh, it's not like overly challenging, but man, is it a fun game to just walk around in. So Switch hit over 40 million worldwide, it looks like. Wow, okay. They're, they might end up about 50. 50. Oh, wait, that's really fucking good if Switch hits 50. I thought about it, it hit about 40. So we're about there now. It's going to do about 50, you know. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not in the industry. I'm not one of those guys that makes you know predictions about you know consoles. But it's about where I thought it would be right now. Cool. And that probably includes they probably bundle in the Switch Lite with that as well. And you're gonna have the Super Switch, which will probably sell another 10 million, 15 million on top of that. So yeah, it's gonna probably be 50 to 60 million. Wow. Wow, well, that's a good rebound after selling what 12 million we use. Holy crap. I think it was like 10.3 million that's in the U.S. Um, or even. Maybe Yikes. worldwide. I think that was maybe worldwide. Uh, you put them on Xboxes, Nintendo games. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh, let's see. And then finally, sadly, for its many employees, the company will be closing 100 to 80 to 200 underperforming stores by February. It's going to be more than that um, later on in the year, including sites in the US, Australia, and the EU to make up for the low sales. Meanwhile, the company's stock market values have plummeted to an all time low. I know people uh, four months ago were like, hey, Pat, that guy who shorted all the, the real estate stocks in the in the 2000s said it's it's you should buy that stock it's going to go back up you don't think he's playing a game maybe he's shorting GameStop as well when people come out in the news it's stuff, all about the game and how you play it well I mean it's, 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 it's the same thing with Bitcoin people lost their shirts on Bitcoin people say oh it's going to be worth all this money and, while, and then they they shorted it they bought it to pump it and then they dumped it when it got high people play all these games with stocks 
It's ridiculous. Triple H. S- stay away from uh, crypto. The game. The game. 